What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide for 2025, I'll show you how to take your game from looking like this to this, and finally to this. In this quick guide, I'll show you how to install a Distant Horizons with shaders for Minecraft in 2025. Let's do it. But before we get into it, this video was sponsored by Apex Hosting. If you're looking to host a powerful Minecraft server with built-in DDoS protection, super low latency, automated backups, and things like that, I definitely recommend checking out Apex Hosting. You'll find a link down below. And of course, if you check them out close to this video's release, you'll find a coupon code in the top right, Craftmas30 for 30% off your first invoice. And of course, just check back up in the corner in the future if you're watching, well, past Christmas. Simply click the link below, get started, choose your Minecraft, Java, Bedrock, or any other game for that matter, your server size, and just like that, you'll have a server set up in no time. A huge shout out to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. Heading over to Distant Horizons, which you'll also find linked down below, all you need is Fabric, Forge, or NeoForge in whatever compatible version you'll see here. I'd recommend you start with Distant Horizons, as this mod's probably going to be updated the slowest of all the mods that I'll show, so whatever works here should work with every Everything else as well. Simply choose download in the top right, select your game version, the most recent for me is 1.21.1, then select Fabric, Forge or Neo Forge, and once you've downloaded it, all that's left to do now is get the rest of the puzzle pieces in place. So, Distant Horizons is compatible with Fabric 1.21.1 at the time of recording. Let's install that if you don't already have it. Heading over to the Fabric Installer linked down below, choose Download for Windows, and then open the installer. Simply choose from the Minecraft version dropdown, whatever version is compatible with Distant Horizons, in my case 1.21.1, make sure Create Profile is ticked, and just click Install. Once it completes, you'll see a pop-up like this, just click OK, and you can close it. Now, hold Start or the Windows key and press R to bring up this window and type in percentage app data percentage slash dot Minecraft and just hit Enter. Once you've done this, your Minecraft folder will open up and all we need to do inside of here is make sure that we have a mods folder. If you don't already have one, create a new folder, just call it mods and open it up. For now, I'll clear this out and let's get to installing things. So, we just downloaded Distant Horizons. We'll paste that into here. Now there's a couple more things we need to install. If you've just installed Fabric, you'll need to download and install the Fabric API, which you'll also find linked down below. Head across here, download, choose the game version 1.21.1, download, and once again, drop this into your mods folder. Then, if you'd like to use shaders, we'll need to download and install Sodium, which you'll also find linked down below. So download, game version 1.21.1, Fabric, download, once again moving it to our mods folder, and finally Iris which actually allows us to choose shader packs. We'll download this 1.21.1 for Fabric and there we go. Once you've downloaded these four mods, we're done. In my previous video, I showed using Indium that currently isn't required at all anymore so you can skip over that step and that's pretty much it. Now that you've got these four mods here, everything should be up to date and ready to work out of the box. So I'll open up Minecraft and inside of the Minecraft launcher, you should now see Fabric Loader 1.21.1 or whatever version you're on. Head across to the installations tab, followed by finding this version, click the three dots next to it and choose edit. Then expand more options, scroll down and find JVM arguments. For you, you'll see XMX 2G. This means that your game can only use two gigs of RAM. Simply hit Control Shift and Escape to open up your Windows Task Manager, head across to the Performance tab and Memory. Here you'll see the total amount of RAM in your system, as well as at the bottom, what's in use, and most importantly, what's available. Say you have 16 gigs of RAM, Windows is using four or so, you have 12 gigs of RAM available. I'd make sure to leave a one or two for browsers, YouTube videos, and things like that, which leaves you with 10 in this case. With that number in mind, change your XMX 2G to be XMX whatever G. So 10G if you have 16 gigs, just like in the example I ran through. You'll need to come up with this number yourself. Just take whatever amount of available RAM you have, leave a bit of headroom for other programs, and punch that number in here. Once you save this 
and head back to play, we can fire up Minecraft 1.21.1 with the Distant Horizons mod and shaders installed. So there we go, we'll head into Options, and now you'll see this brand new option up here, Distant Horizons. Clicking this takes us to Distant Horizons menu, and here we can change some of the options. Essentially, you can change the quality, which may be important if you're using a lower powered graphics card, but you can also change the CPU load from low impact to balanced, aggressive, and finally, I paid for the whole CPU. If you'd like Distant Horizons to generate chunks much further out, much quicker, crank this option up, but keep in mind it is going to give your PC a run for its money. For me, I'll leave it at this, we'll click done, and we'll head into a world so we can see what this has done. Immediately you'll see your world loads in as usual, and then things just expand a lot. As you can see, we can see way further than the usual 16 chunks or 32 chunks. We can see really, really far. For me, things loaded in super quickly as I've already explored the world, but of course, it gets even more impressive. If you have shaders installed, then you can turn them on, but Distant Horizons doesn't work with any old shader. Heading into Options, Video Settings, Shader Packs, and choosing anything here, you may see things work fine, or Distant Horizons just stops working entirely. Essentially, Distant Horizons is only compatible with some shader packs because of how it actually works. You'll find a compatible list on the Distant Horizons Discord linked down below. For me though, there's two shader packs that I'll link. One that I use is Bliss Shader, which I think looks really nice and inviting, and the Shrimple Shader, which has a much softer, cooler look. These look really great, especially water, and they definitely add to the vibe of the whole game. I don't know if Complementary Unbound is on the supported list for Distant Horizons, but it seems to be working at least mostly, so hey, there's that one too. But again, you'll find a full list on the Discord. For now, all you need to do is wait for the chunks around you to generate, or at least a distant horizons to generate, and when it's done, you can fly around your absolutely beautiful, massive world, seeing as far as the eye can. It's fantastic, and I can't imagine playing Minecraft without distant horizons installed, or NVIDIA, you'll find a link to that down below as well. A similar mod, but very different, and NVIDIA only, but anyways, that's really it. Hopefully you found this video real interesting, and of course, if you have a mod pack that's compatible with this, even better, but it does seem like a few different mods can break the functionality relatively easily, so you'll need to experiment if you're going to drop this into a massive mod pack, but beyond that, that's really it. So, hopefully you found this video useful, and again, this is the updated installation guide for 2025. If there's anything new that you need to do, you'll find information down below, add in the pinned comment, and again, thank you so much to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. My name is Bean Troubleshoot, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!